Do you watch the Grammys at all? No. Nope. Not at no, all? No desire, no interest. Yeah. There was, uh, I did watch it. There was one performance that was particularly moving. Tracy Chapman sang Fast Car. She hasn't performed publicly in a long time. It's really good. My dad loves that song. It's, Ev good, it's like, you know. And he sang it, good. she sang it with Luke Combs, who's a singer who re redid the song and they sang it together. It was beautiful. I was in tears. I was like, really? Yeah. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> The universe does oh not want God. me to have this podcast. It's fine. How often does this happen? Or is this just me? Uh, it's, I, no, 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 no. I will not be tainting that by saying it was just you. It's not. Uh, the other, well, <laughs> last week it was the mics. So today it's the lights. And that's okay. We're just, it's a test of how much I really like this. And you know what? I do like it. So we're just gonna, we're gonna keep it. Okay. okay. You mean you like having the... Whatever. I'm so <laughs> over it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the pillows were a, a bad idea. The pillows, I'm just trying to block the color light that I have right here, but that's fine. That works. At least we don't have the cats <laughs> scratching at the door. Do you have pets or no? I grew up with cats. <sighs> and then I had cats like, yeah, a little in the adulthood, but no, I don't want to live with animals anymore. <laughs> I love animals, but living with them, I like them in their own habitat. Yeah, I agree. I agree. They're like, I they're a lot of work. Yeah, and it's like, now I have children, like that's even more work. And they, they love animals. My daughter loves cats. My, my son loves dogs. And I'm like, absolutely not. No ever. Pets. Really? And there's a part of me that kind of feels sad because they want it and I would love to give that to them, but... No, I'm not living with an animal. You're going to be taking care of it. Exactly. And I'm already having to take care of them. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot. And a whole nother. And you have to like, you have to find a place for it to go when you're on vacation. And you have to, that call, like, it's just too much. It's too much. I remember my mom used to always be like, I'm not getting an animal or another animal because you guys are going to, we'd be like, we'll take care of it. We'll take care of it. She's like, you say that. And then I'm going to be the one left walking it and ch changing it or taking care of it or cleaning up after it. Exactly. No go. Exactly. And she was right. Because mm -hmm. kids always want the good part about pets. They don't want a, the heavy lifting. The, I get it. I was a kid. But, you know, I'm thinking about the pets we had. I don't think that was even, I don't think I asked to have any cats. I think that was my mom's. <laughs> that was her thing. She wanted it, but... It was an hour room all the time. That's weird. I don't know. Did you like cats? Mm, I never trusted cats. I don't. I, there's something about cats. I'm looking at them like this. They're looking at me like this. And I'm looking at them like this. Too. Really? I used to say that like I, if people that didn't like cats, that like I didn't trust them. But you're the first person that I like <laughs> that has said that. So maybe my, maybe my thought process is wrong. <laughs> They are very skeptical, although if you met mine, they would they would be all up in your business. Just be like, let's hang. That's the thing. That's the thing. Okay, so now, that's what that was always my thought. Now, I don't know. I, it's like, okay, I have a son and a daughter, mm -hmm. right? My daughter reminds me of a cat, so I kind of understand them now. Like, if you had to ask me what animal is she, she's the cat, and my son is the dog, like... It's amazing. So I understand these animals because of my children. You're like, my son's the Labrador. My yeah. daughter's the, the the mountain lion. The cat, the house cat. But I understand now. I under, so I don't see them as that. It's just, they're just mind their own business. They don't care what you think. They are, they're doing their own thing. And, and they're not that affectionate like the dog. The dog is always, always wants to be on you. Mm -hmm. But that... Kitty cat is just like, you know, I'll come give you some love when I feel like it, but it's not going to be all up in your face. I'm going to be, I'm low maintenance. I'm low maintenance. You don't have to worry about me, you know, and just rub me real quick and then go. That's like my daughter. I get it. I get it. <laughs> You're like, I get it now. I did not, I did not give you my introduction, your proper introduction. It is an amazing day. It is a reunion of sorts. It is Jeremy. I, I don't want to say huge crew because 
we had a long talk about like how I felt about it. So I don't want to be like huge crew member, but huge crew That's member. It actually is. Did they give you guys a name? It's At weird some point? because I, I can't remember because when I look back, I see like on IMDb and on certain scripts, I think I see names, Mandy. That's right. But I don't remember. I forgot about that. But I remember a different name. So I don't know if they changed names. There was a name, but it was never like, this is your name. You are this and you are this. It was, you know, it was mm -hmm. never like that. Because they didn't give you lines. No. And we talked about this. Yeah. How do you feel about that? <laughs> um, you know, I was telling my daughter today, because she was like, you know, she wants to be an actress. And she's like, you were an actress. You got to do it. Because I told her from a child, that's what I wanted to do. I said, but, you know... I really didn't, it wasn't fulfilling the way I needed it to be. And that was one place where that, how I felt that. Because I was there, I had my own room, I had my name on my own room. I'm, you know, I have credits and all these things, but I couldn't act. I couldn't even do it. I couldn't do what I came to do. I was just, and it's like, okay, well, if you're an actor, you should be able to handle anything acting wise so you know basically i was miming and it's like i was so frustrated so mm -hmm. that's how it was you know you didn't strange. i don't know that people know how you came to be <laughs> in the huge crew so why don't you explain <laughs> to everyone how how you came about being a part of the threesome that we had so um and that's what's crazy okay <clears throat> so at that time i was in my early 20s and i was what was I doing? I was, what was I doing? Oh, I was doing background work. That's what you would call it, mm -hmm. extra work. Mm -hmm. And I was on that show just doing background work. I was um, in the, I, I remember we were in the gym and someone came up to me and said, can we see you in the back? And I said, okay. And then they pulled me in and said, the person that we cast for this role didn't show up and you are perfect for the role and I'm like oh okay I just came to be you know to mm -hmm. get in real quick and get out like you know and but that was like oh okay cool cool this is this is how it happened this is how I was discovered this is how it happened <laughs> <laughs> and didn't get to say now one line and how many seasons I think I was on I mean not seasons episodes Two seasons. Yeah. A lot of episodes. Yeah. And you got you got put in there pretty early because I came in pretty early. And I wasn't I I maybe in the maybe in the first episode was I by myself, but I can't remember a time where okay. I was I was really alone in terms of like my character was always kind of part of the crew. Okay, so because that's what I was wondering. Were you how, so how long were you you before we showed up? I want to say only like one episode, but like, you know, how each episode is two, technically two episodes. So I think I want, I'll have to go back and look, but I think it was the first episode, but like almost immediately, I think you guys were, were placed in, which okay, is crazy that they told you that somebody didn't show up. It's weird. Like they didn't want to. Cause does that mean two people didn't show up? Right, because I'm pretty sure that's how Kathy got cast too. You know, definitely. That is so interesting. So what was what what would be the point of that to not have to put us on a certain? Well, I think the fact that they didn't give you lines was so that they didn't have to pay, pay. you a certain rate. That for sure, that one's I think easily explainable. Um, I don't know why they would bring you in like that though. Maybe just <laughs> maybe they knew that there would probably be some type of issue about the pay, so they just wanted to make yeah. They, yeah, they knew what they were doing and it, whatever. Yeah, I think, I think they probably had the intention of making, keeping extras as background, but not realizing how pivotal, like pivotal <laughs> you guys would be to like us three mm -hmm. and we would become like a staple item. Mm -hmm. Did you, did they pay you extra pay or did they pay you? No, I was, I was an extra. At they, that point, I was a co-star. Co okay, mm -hmm. okay. Because I was gonna say, well, wait no, a minute. No, no, no. They, they. But and that's what was weird. It's like, just let me say something. Something. Mm. They gave, they gave a couple of lines to the non-speakers on on yeah. set for sure. It's crazy because if you like <laughs> all of the little stills of us, 
I'm always doing extra because I'm trying to <laughs> try it so hard. I think we all were. Um, it's mm-hmm. funny because that was the type of show, though, and I know that the rest of the cast talks about it all the time, that it was a different show and that, like, it's very character and, like, we have to be very kind of gimmicky and when we're angry, we have to be, like, extra. hmm, and, like, yeah. hmm, and I watched some of that back and I'm just, like, oh, man. So cringe. Please don't base my acting chops <laughs> off of this tape. I, I can't. I was just every every time I was on the set, I was hoping this is the time I'm gonna get a line. I'm gonna they're gonna see something in me. It had nothing to do with you. It never has anything to do with you. Were you on many shows um, doing background work before Ned's, or was Ned's one of the first ones? Um, like. I had some experience doing background at that point because I think after that, I didn't do any more. So I definitely, yeah, I stopped after Ned. So I had been doing it and I I had like a stand in role for a while on a show, a Tori Spelling show. I don't know if anyone remembers. I don't even remember the name of it, but um, she had a lot. She it was before she got married. It was it was the one that would like go in and out of reality and it was it would talk about her growing up and I was a stand in for her maid or something. <laughs> but um So know. wait, so wait. So Ned's was your last was it your last stint with acting or did you try and do more after Ned's? So I definitely did a theater. Yeah. Like- you know, I, I love that. I just wanted to do more T V, but it just never it never, because also I was a professional singer, so that's, I was mainly doing that. But then I got into a relationship and that kind of changed everything. I was more of a help mate. I was more than that. And I don't even want to We're going to talk about that. it. We're going to get into it. Uh, I think uh, we had a very long uh, coffee date the other day and we came to realize that there were a lot of similarities that we have had with relationships in our past. And I've noticed it's a very common theme with a lot of different young women. And I thought it would be a great idea to have you come and share your experiences. And I think, and we talked about this, um, when I was going through my relationship, I, right around the time, I didn't realize that my ex was had these characteristics until I started seeing a bunch of TikToks. And then I was like, maybe, and then these red flags started coming up and then they started showing up more frequently. And I was like, man, I wish these were in existence before my relationship got too serious because then I'd at least know. Maybe I wouldn't listen to them. Maybe, Mm. you know, like us stubborn girls, like... Mm. Sometimes we don't want to hear it when we don't want to hear it, but like I wish I would have known. So this is this is our time to maybe share some uh, some things we've learned. So why don't you talk about it? So you so you left. So after Ned's, you got into a relationship. You were trying to make your singing and songwriting work. Mm-hmm. I was in a relationship at that time. How old? I remember how at that time. But my last, like the on the last episode, I was twenty four years old. That's crazy. Yeah, and I remember... Because I was 15. I I remember uh, we had an episode. It was not at the studio. It was on location. And during lunchtime, they told us to move our cars into the lot. And I went and moved my car. And everybody was like, all the kids in the cast were like, you know how to drive? You know how to drive? And I was like... Actually, 24, you're all like 14. Like, but nobody knew that I was not a kid. And I just thought that was hilarious. But she's got a driver's <laughs> license. What is this? Which is crazy. I don't think a lot of people realize, though, that like in a lot of uh, Hollywood, a lot, they will hire people that are over 18 to play children, to play children. all the time. I was surprised that Kathy and I were the only ones because all you guys were mm-hmm. actually children. Mm-hmm. That doesn't normally happen in Mm-mm. these, you know, not normally. At least not when I was growing up in the like, early 80s. And mm-hmm. like, no, the 90s maybe and 80s. They were all adults playing high school kids. So anyway, but um, so. Relationship. What was your childhood like? Did you just always know that you wanted to, to, to be a performer? Was it just. Yeah, you know, I grew up in church, like how they, how a lot of people have and. 
that's a very my church was very musical. I was in the choir, but even before church, I was in a the school that my mother taught at that I ended up going to was a private school. It went from like you're two years old to second grade, right? Mm -hmm. And that was like we learned acting and singing there. We did shows, we did musicals. That's where my love for it came. I got practice in church because here I am singing every week. But there, like, you know, after I left there, I was still singing. And, and then school, after that, I went to a musical. I went to a, a, a school that was performing arts school. Nice. I went to a, a performing arts high school. Which one? OSHA. Oh. oh. That's, but it's junior high, high school. Yeah, I, I've heard of that. Where? where? Santa Ana. Okay. Yeah. But I, yeah, I went to Hamilton, and so there I was able to do all the musical theater. Um, I was in the choir, I was in an acting class, and we did a, a performance, a couple of them. So, you know, just, I mean, as a child, as a ch little child, I did a lot of musical theater, so it's always been there. And But the acting and singing, I, everyone was like, well, you have to choose, and it's like, how? How? <laughs> and songwriting, like, I, it's all in me. I'm a writer, I can, and I have to... I have to sing my thoughts because I love to sing, so I'm writing in my thoughts, but they have to rhyme. This is how it works. So I'm just yeah. singing my thoughts. But anyway, um, I was pursuing that, um, going on tour, things like that. And he and I like reconnected because we met when we were in high school. He didn't go to my school. I was in like a, a, a gospel ensemble that my high school boyfriend introduced me to. So I was in that. And then I met a guy who knew him. It was like, you know, mutual. Mm -hmm. But we became friends. I, I had a little a crush on him because he looked like a guy from a show that was on at that time that was so cute. And I had a crush. But um, then when I got a little older in my early 20s, we, we, we reconnected and he was trying to do music. And I was already in music. And I'm like, oh, cool, I can help him, you know. He has talent and drive. And Famous last words. What? Ooh, I can, can help, help him. him. <laughs> but you know, for me, it was just the reason I chose him because I look back and I'm like, why did you do that? But my world was so small, I guess. Like I was very heavy into my my former faith at that time. And I, I did everything by the book as a child and up into an adult. Like I, I, that was my M.O., and <clears throat> in the dating world, when you become like out there in the world, people don't take you serious and don't want to deal with you after they realize you're serious um, about, you know, your purity until marriage. He was he was a person that acted like that was not a problem. And he was down for that. And, you know, we end up getting married later, like four years later. But that was a big part of me wanting to be with him because I couldn't see outside that box. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so I used to really go for, be a virgin till you're married. I don't know anymore because I don't know. But anyway, that's a whole yeah, other yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But anyway. We'll so so <laughs> where, where did he, was there a point where he started to turn? Was it after the marriage or was it before? You know, the signs were always there. But one thing I learned is when you've been groomed into a certain behavior or you come from certain behaviors, like let's say people that raise you are a certain way, and even if it's uncomfortable, it's something that you are used to and it's just familiar, a lot of times it's easy to fall into that not realizing because you're still struggling the same struggle that you've been struggling mm -hmm. without even realizing you're struggling. It's just you wish this was better, but this is how it is. And that's kind of how it happened. So there was always things that weren't right, but I was used to just proving my worth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what we all have to do. Someone who feel didn't like... deserve it, though. Mm-mm. -mm. That's the thing. Mm-mm. -mm. So did it, was, he, was he the type that, like, slowly kind of broke you down in terms of just... You know, sometimes when we don't realize it, sometimes there are, I feel like, sometimes looking back on it, you're like, oh, he was slowly breaking down my walls by doing these things. I mean, so, <laughs> um, I don't know, because when I look back, 
he was always the same. It's just he's a type that gives a little, takes a lot, you know, and it's like, oh, okay, okay, things are going to be good because, okay. And then it's just a, a facade to reel you back in real quick. It's just, it's that dance all the time. Mm -hmm. And you have to be somebody that's used to dealing with that and not realizing it or crazy, you know, not crazy. I don't like to use that word, but. Now nah, you can use it. I don't like to though, because it's like, well. Not for you. I could be. Like if I'm calling someone else, I could be, you know what I'm saying? For dealing with that, for dealing with that for so long. Only somebody that's, you know, not that I, you know what I mean? No, I get it. I get I it. I couldn't have been all there, but I, I think was anybody that coming from here, mm -hmm. not here. At what point did you start to not pursue your singing anymore or your songwriting anymore? <laughs> <clears throat> well, so I started dating him when I was 22. Like that was the official, you know, time we started dating. And at that time, I was pursuing being a songwriter, and he wanted to be a, a producer. So I was um, just supportive in that. Like, my mother even um, invested in him to get his own equipment to produce music, right? And I would write, and, you know, I knew a lot, I had a lot of connections, so I would, like, call them and see if he could get with them because he also wanted to be a, um, what do you call it? Uh, the person, I can't remember. It's, I'm like so far removed. Uh, the person who, the recording engineer. He went to yeah. be a recording engineer. So I was just doing all I could to get him in there because I'm in there. And us as a team, oh my God, imagine what we could create. And he's driven. He wants this. And we can make some cool music. So let's do this. So we we're doing this. And, and the, uh, as well as that, I was singing and I like, I was working for this company where I'm just singing, selling karaoke machines and making a lot of money. Really? Yes. I was, we were in different Costco's around California and they trapped, they sent me all over California, like even to Cali Mexicali, I'd never heard of that before, <laughs> to sing. I was making like $30 plus tips plus all this money at 24, 25 years old. Oh, I bet you, you sold a plus, lot of karaoke machines. I did. I'd come incredible. buy one. <laughs> You're like, do I get to sing like her? It was so great. It was, thank you. It was great. You're welcome. But I, I got him that as well. Like, he didn't have to sing, but he had to, you know, wear pants in a tie and sail, you know. But um, after that, I paid, we got married, um, all the wedding. Like, I'm just, I'm bringing this up because I'm thinking about all the things. I, I had no requirements. I was just helping and and trying to build. And you didn't know though. No one knows no. at 22 that they're not supposed to be um, trying to make everything right or Unless just giving. Their parents told them, and I guess a lot of us come from mothers who didn't know. Mm hmm. You know? Mm hmm. But yeah, it wasn't my job to help build him. And mm -hmm. that's what I was doing. And I didn't get anything, but I was giving, right? So I, I was giving, giving, giving. Then, he started, um, well, I, I, I was always told he was jealous. Like even when we, we had, I think we could invite people to the set, he would not come downstairs because he lived in my parents' building. I gave him a place, we gave him a place to live. He was homeless and he needed a place to live. He didn't mind actually, he didn't, I, I was the one who wanted to help. So he was living in a, in a studio, like it was above, someone's garage, right? Mm -hmm. Where their studio was. And he was just using their equipment all the time, sleeping on the floor in their garage. And I would come in there and, you know, we would do music and I would be like, he needs a home. Like what? His mom wouldn't let him live there because he wasn't in school and he wanted to do this. And I'm like, mom, like, can you please, you, you own a building, you, you know, please let him have rent a room and my dad was like no and my mom was like yes yeah. she's like that oops I keep hitting the no, mic you're fine you're fine <laughs> she's like that too she's like very supportive and yeah let him move in but um how old was he was he my is he was same age, he's the same age as me he's four months younger than me yeah he didn't get along with his mom no no that's uh something that we talked about is another red flag I think I don't know that I would ever get with anybody never, again. Never. Because it just means you don't treat 
you don't treat women well, regardless of how your mother treated you. You can have problems with her. You could have reservations. But if you treat your mother with disrespect or you talk down to her Mm -hmm. or if there's like you talk shit about her, like, you know, she's not your superior, uh, you've got problems. I also had to you also have to look at this. He had no friends. None? Like the person, the place that he was staying before my mom let him live in her place, um, that person, they were working together. So whenever he was working closely with someone, they became his friend, right? But then he ruined that friendship. He ruined every everything he had. And like when we got married and we would be like, I'm friendly, right? So we would befriend people or I would befriend people. You would befriend people. I would be so like... But he's business, so he always wanted to do business with people, and I'm like, no, because it's gonna it's gonna be ruined, and you're I'm not gonna, gonna get the to business see those people ever again. And that's how it always was. <sighs> Just like those, you should always look at everything. Like if I want to help, like after that whole situation, or this whole situation, because it's still a part of my life. I have children, you know, but I just know I want to help all the girls because they don't know. Mm-mm. No Mm -mm. one, they don't, luckily we do have TikTok and stuff like that, but like you, if I would have seen these videos on that, would I have known, Mm -hmm. would I have, would I have, what would I have done? Mm -hmm. Because I really believed in marriage, so that's why I didn't leave. Once I was married, I mean, before I got married, why? Because I just wanted to be married. You can always. I was young. You can always leave. And I hate, I see so many, it's funny because we, I mean, we talked about this briefly, but you're not on, you're not very, um, you're not sucked into the toxic social media bubble that I am. And so I see, as much as I see some of the good things, I do see some of the negative things. And I do see a lot, unfortunately, of content from podcasts generated by men who talk about how things weren't the way that they used to once be and how women aren't doing the things that they once loved about them and this is why women are going to be single for the rest of their lives and la 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 fucking blah. No. Yeah, no. no. Um, I don't think there's enough information that females can get out there mm. in terms of things that they should be doing and things that they should not be doing and things they don't have to take. And, you know, any, you can change your mind at any given time and you're totally allowed that any man or boy that tells you otherwise is a problem and you should run immediately, immediately. Did you, did he tend to uh, isolate you from people? Did you, you know, I had friends, um, but he he had a problem with the fact that I talked to my parents every day. He didn't like it. You talk to your parents too much. And I'm like, you don't even talk to your parents. I would have to be like, call your mom. Hasn't mm-hmm. it been like two months? Mm-hmm. You're not going to say hi? I'll, I'll get to it. You know, like to me, that was weird. I mean, that and like t- giving you something that only he's in charge of and then taking it from you. Yeah, he wanted me dependent upon him. And that's another thing that women should just... Look at these little things. Like, it's not normal to not want you to talk to certain... Why? Why Why is he worried? The thing that's crazy is my ex wasn't that way with my family, so I always thought he wasn't going to be one of those guys because I was like, he's not alienating. He's encouraging me to hang out with my family, so he must be good. When the, one thing I've learned is just because he has one trait doesn't mean that all these right. other ones that's aren't. True. Glaring red that's flags. True. But I think everybody comes with... Some type of, and it, like something inside of them, your intuition will let you know when something is not right. Mm-hmm. You have to listen. Like, at, don't feel like you owe anybody anything. I think that's number one. It could be. I don't know if there's a number one, but that's a strong one. Don't, because then you get, if you do, you get sucked into doing stuff that you don't feel comfortable doing or you don't feel, I was in a space that I didn't feel comfortable being in, but I felt like, well, you know, I don't. I don't want him to think that I think I'm better, so I'm gonna deal with this. I'm that I would normally be called bougie because I'm not dealing, but I'll do it because no, be yeah. you. If yeah. it doesn't feel right, don't do it. Right? Mm-hmm. With don't do it. Anything and anybody in business and relationships, anything. You don't owe anybody anything, unless you owe somebody something. <laughs> unless you owe somebody something. <laughs>
you know, I really wanted to just be a singer, right? And I was helping him with the business, like starting from all the business, every, every idea he had, I was just doing everything. And I knew that my time was gonna come once he had everything, cause he's the man, right? He's the provider. So once we have all his stuff in the row, I mean, in order and everything's good, then I'll get back to my stuff, right? Um, because remember before I didn't mention, oh, I didn't get to that. Um, I was singing, I was doing all these things, but he started pushing himself into my sessions. And I eventually got kicked, like not kicked out. Um, they stopped calling me because he was showing up to my sessions, but he was forcing his himself in my car. Wouldn't get out. My car came in with me. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't realize till later because I'm like, why am I not getting called anymore? Because your boyfriend's coming with to work with you. Oh, dang. You know, like I couldn't stop it. We literally, I was late because we had a fight because I was trying to le get him to leave my car. You know, it's he wouldn't just, get out of your car. Oh my god. On your way to a, a song ready session. And why? I, it was actually. It, I was. A couple times it happened, but one main thing I remember, it was with Kanye West, and he actually ended up on a, that single. You can hear his voice today because he made his way in there, and Ye did not know who was who. He just knew this random dude was sitting down while we were all singing. Why are you sitting, dude? Get up and sing. So he gets up and gets in the mic and sings, and he's on the album. He's not a singer. That's nuts. So, and why didn't I leave then? Like, why, why did I, why? Like, but I don't want to think too hard. Why? I don't want to put myself yeah. back there. Um, I have children and my daughter always reminds me like when she hears me, like, cause I'll hear things that are in, um, empowering and teaching me about that. And I'm learning about what to do and what not to do. And I'll be like, yes, I wish, I wish I would have known sooner. And she's like, why mom? I wouldn't be here if you knew. And so when I talk about it, I it kind of, I, I feel a little guilty because I don't want to have regrets for having my children. Um, they wouldn't have been here if I had not gone through that, but going through that was so hard. And it still is because I have children. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. The one thing I do my best to do is think about what I want versus what I do not want. Because I believe that the mind is powerful and I believe that we attract things to us. So if I'm thinking all the time what I don't want, then I'm, that's what I'm seeing. That's my reality. <laughs> that's what's it's, showing up. You know, and yeah. I want better for my life. So I think about the, you know, I think about my daughter is incredible. And I think that she's going to attract, regardless of what she's going through, her daddy issues now that she actually has. You know, that's the sad Because he hasn't been around. <sighs> no, he's like, he obviously never wanted to. Um. Excuse me. Um, what, be a parent? <laughs> yeah, because when when we separated, I knew, I, I just knew it was just going to be me and the children and what am I going to do? And then we get to court, you know, because of the child support alimony situation. And he's comes in looking all sad and crying and lying and saying things that that he's just repeating what he's heard. It was crazy. I want to help people not get to this point. Yeah. And I've been listening to Shira and I've I need I need to I need you. to I saw it was two hours I was like oh great I need to spend some time tonight and listen to it because I have a feeling I'm gonna I'm gonna there's gonna be a it's, lot I think I sent you two things and it's an eye-opener but it's not our job to prove or impress any to prove to anyone or impress any man it's mm -hmm. not our job to do that mm -mm. but for some reason a lot of girls get caught up in that mentality. They think they have to do things that will prove that they're good enough or, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know why I picked up the, the, my mom's side of just doing all the work and then not having the requirement that my partner also do the same. Cause my, my ex just let me do everything mm. instead of, you know, and it got to a point like the, the one conversation that I hear a lot um, and I know it resonates a lot with my friends, but they discount it. I'm like, but don't discount this because it was taking out the trash is something for me. That's like, I think it was Charles Barkley or there was some basketball player that said, um, if your if your wife asks you to take the trash out, just, just let the trash pile up. She'll do it eventually. And Ooh. I was like, oh, you are, you are no longer a person I will admire. <laughs> Because that true. is some toxic bullshit. You're, but you teach people how to treat you. You train them. You have to. 
And if you go into a marriage basically saying, I'm the help, yeah, then you're going to be the help. Mm -hmm. And they're going to expect that from you. That's why next time I'm hiring help because I don't want to do this. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to clean up after myself when I make a mess, but I'm not going to be responsible for everybody's mess all the time. Are you crazy? Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. You don't want to be either. So we're hiring help. Same thing with cooking. Yeah. Every single night, do I feel like thinking of what we're going to have? No. And that's not... I watched this, um, this, this was so, so funny, this dating show on TV and these girls would come on and say what makes them a wife. And the first thing they say is I cook and I clean. That makes you a maid. That makes you a chef, <laughs> not a wife. Stop making Agreed. life duties, wife duties. That's not what that Agreed. is. Why is it? What is it about men that are like, I want my, I want my girl to clean for me. I will never, or cook for me. I don't, I don't understand. It's the, this 1950s, remember they had that yeah. whole thing and. And people, and that's what she was labeled. That's what she was holding a pie. I know. With a with the, she, the vacuum she ads were on. always her. Like this is yeah. what the the wife can use. You're like we still we still live a little bit. I'm so glad you're not on TikTok. You would flip your mind. I I have to actively take time off, and I do it because like I make content so people can be driven to like this stuff. But like. Seeing me dudes talk on, on on these podcasts, and I go take the mics away. Somebody take their fucking mics away. One thing I've noticed by listening to these guys is that what I've realized is that none of them have ever truly loved a woman. Because if they have, how could they say those types of things? And most of them are single, and you're like, I don't question why. And they might not even like women, honestly. I am of, of the them. full belief that most of those men like dudes. They might not even realize that they like I don't like think women. they do. I they don't think they do. Think, I mean, they might like the way a woman feels physically, but they might have a resentment towards women. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But for sure, yeah, they, they've they never loved a woman. How no. can, how, a lot of these things, because I've heard some of this stuff, and, and they get mad when a woman wants this. A, a real a man who loves a woman wants this for his mom. Yeah, yeah, and doesn't isn't like <laughs> angry at him. I should it's say crazy. I should say not all men. The ones that are left are like in in some senior homes. There's still <laughs> some good ones left. All right, not all men. Are you happy? Because I know I'm gonna get somebody in the comments that's like, eh, she's just she hates all men. I don't. I just hate the ones that have a <laughs> fucking mic that just seem to make. Younger boys think that this is how you I should know. think, that's and that's bad. not how you. That's not how you get the right woman. Exactly. That's. Are there? But are there any ones out there speaking the 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 other way? Men. Yeah. There's a couple. Uh, my therapist actually referred me to a couple. There's like. Um, there's one, but they are. Um, it is a niche. It's very like. They're men with. I don't want to, I don't want to give, I don't want to say feminine because some men hear that word and think that it means something, right. but it doesn't. It just means you're able to, you're emotionally mature. You're able to tap into your emotions essentially is feminine is like, you're able to go, Oh, I'm feeling sad today and express it. And you know, if you're talking about something sad, you tear up or you feel those feminine emotions, energy. right? We're it's all, feminine. We all have some. And I feel like there's a lot of guys who have been trained that it's not okay to express those feelings. And yeah. so they just bottle it up and then take shit out on people like us who express themselves or talk about these things or, you know, I don't under, but yeah, there are. And you know what? Uh, this is going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to list all the good men that I, I, I will have done my research. We will promote <laughs> the men that, that of are goodness. doing, doing some good work out there. What would you say to your daughter if... If you started to get a sense about a guy, because I've wondered this question. I don't know what I would say. If I had a daughter and she started dating somebody like your ex, I like I wouldn't even know what to say to get, because I don't know that anything that you can say will get them to necessarily stop. But I've been trying to like brainstorm on like what I would say to maybe make her just think a little bit more about it. What, what do I wish someone would have told me? Cause I remember one time I was washing his clothes for him and oh. one of my parents made a remark and said, you're just playing house. You're just playing house. And I'm like, okay, first of all, I don't really know exactly what that means. Secondly, okay, so what should I do? 
like I'm thinking, I didn't say this because, well, I didn't. Ha I guess I didn't feel comfortable enough to say it. I feel like maybe I shouldn't say it because I might get in trouble for saying it. Yeah. And that's part of the problem. That's part of why I dealt with somebody like that. Because mm -hmm. I wasn't free to really, you know, express. Like if, if something was distasteful to me. And now I really want to just say all the things that I'm like. <laughs> just, as you should. As you should. I feel like that's, I mean, that's how you kind of figure out you know, whether or not it's a good fit is saying what your boundaries your, are. Yeah, practicing your strength. But yeah, what, what, I don't know. I, I, Red it's flags. so much I went through, girl. I don't know. <laughs> well, that actually leads me to a great point. You, we had briefly talked about how what you've been through in the last five, six years, you feel like you've um, had some memory issues and you're, you're, which I think, I mean, in my experience, it doesn't have to be something so catastrophic for your brain to take effect of something like that. Because that is trauma. That was years of trauma for you. And, you know, I, can you talk about it for, for a little bit? Just like. The memory? Yeah. Were you struggling with, like, is it, I mean, I felt like, for, and I still kind of do a little bit. I feel like there's a fog sometimes and sometimes I can't get out of it. And it's not a weed fog. It's like a, you know what <laughs> I mean? Funny, that's what I say. I don't say it in those words, but yeah, because I was thinking it was weed that was, I started my, my cannabis, cannabis journey in 2000. <laughs> cannabis? Yeah, 2016. Yeah, 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 yeah. Towards the end of your relationship? Yeah. That's or, when I started my. Yeah, 20, like I. I was dibbling and dabbling before, and then it just became a big part of my life. But I mean, it was 2015. I mean, I lost a lot of weight. I lost 100 pounds, and I accredited it all to cannabis, mostly. But anyway, um, what was the question? Fuck oh, what the fuck was memory? <laughs> fuck Ozempic. <laughs> They're going to say, start smoking cannabis. Sativa, specifically. So, I, I agree. Yeah. I 100% oh, agree. Magic. Yeah. But, um, the memory. Yeah, I... Then I saw something and it said if you've been through these types of traumas, it does something to your, your memory, your brain. And I'm like, oh, well, that's probably what it is because mm -hmm. it can't be weed. Like, it's just something. I I remember a lot of things trigger things that happened to me, though. And I'm but I'm getting out of that because I don't want that to continue with me, continue on with me in my life. But at one point I wrote down and I, oh, I think I deleted it. It was called Book of Open Wounds, and it was just all the things because I felt like all the things I've been through, there was no closure. He never apologized. He just did them, and I'm left like, what? What did I do? Like, why? You know? So it was it was like pages of it, and um, that I remember. But when it comes to like, it's more short term memory, I guess, mm -hmm. or not even just that. Like, people will hit me up on Facebook and be like. You don't remember we were friends or we used to talk a long time you were so deep everyone always tells me this you were so deep i get a lot of these and i'm like i don't remember this i'm looking at them like, i don't you know and i'm like yeah or my best friend would tell me something that happened years ago and i don't remember and i'm like dang so that's not the way that's the trauma i know for sure i've dealt with ptsd and it's something because when, when you've gone through traumatic situations emotionally physically all these things because you know, because these things happen in your brain. So, but you can work through them, and that's what I'm doing. Um, and I stopped weed for a while because I was thinking that could be that, and I realized it wasn't. So, yeah. Did you the book of open wounds? Did you just like start writing? Did you just like put it all out there, everything you were feeling, and just like keep an open document going? I started this when I was still married, or so. I'm still legally married and I would love help if anyone knows how to be divorced I would love that but it's it, it goes deep but anyway um I started it when I was in the relationship and so I would write down the different things that would happen and um after I got you know after I was separated I would remember things that happened and I would put them in there too because it was therapy I guess I guess it was mm -hmm. the therapeutic and I felt like this is the only way I can get closure. I wrote a song too about closure. I was gonna say, Did can you hear it? no? Oh. Where where do I find it? It's not out. 
I have it on my phone. But yeah, I, I, well, I, I would love it. to hear it, but you should release it. I think you. I I'm thinking about it. Sounds like you're. Do you not want to like release your music? The thing is, like, I have a single out right now, but in March it'll be gone. The only reason that. Yeah, I released it because um, it was in a film, and then I had all these random people finding me on social media asking me to release this song, the single, release it as a single. So I did, and you know, but to release it, I'm not signed. It's just me. I was paying more money than I was making. I thought I was gonna, you know, for my songs, I thought I was gonna be like Beyonce money. That's what I thought. Yeah. That, that's what I thought was gonna be happening with 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 what I was creating all these years didn't so it's like it just didn't make any sense so I just shut it down last year I was like I'm not doing it anymore but I listened to closure the other day and I said this song is so good for everybody because it's anybody anybody who who needs closure and what what was I making the music for why was I making it just because it was in there and it needed to get out but now once it's out somebody needs it somebody needs to hear it but if it's costing me more to keep it out then then I'm making what was it on SoundCloud or something? No, I had it on. It's currently on all anywhere, any platform, anywhere you would buy music. It's, it's there. and it's not up there anymore, or it's, it's there. It's gonna be pulled down in March. I paid up until March of this year. Noted. Noted. It's called Love is. We're gonna have to just boost boost the uh this the the plays of Closure. I can find it on Spotify. Closure is not out. Mm. Love Is is the song that's out. Okay. That was in the film, Love Is. But Closure, I have never released. It's just, you know, my playlist at, in my own phone. And I was just listening to it. And I said, this is a good song. <laughs> we should, you should, you should put it out. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make an outfit it video be, to it, it or something. It might be on SoundCloud. Because I, I do have some, and it might be on SoundCloud. I'll text you when I, when, when we're done here and I'll try and find it. We can try and, try yeah. and boost it. That's, um. It's a great song. What, how do you, like, as somebody, I don't, I don't know how to write songs. I'm, I'm, my brain works a thousand miles an hour and I never know. I overthink everything. So I don't know where to start. If somebody wanted to like start songwriting, if they wanted to express themselves or take their gripes out or just, where would you recommend they start? It, well, we don't use pen and paper anymore, do we not? I love a pen and paper. Oh, really? I love a pen and paper. That's how it originally started. Nothing beats paper. a... Yeah. <laughs> but if you're, like, go in your notes on your phone and or do your pen and paper, and then just start writing down your your thoughts or your feelings or whatever you're thinking about. It is. It doesn't even have to be your own thing. It could be anything that you're thinking. And then start trying to make it rhyme, trying to, you know, make it come together. You learn poetry in, in elementary school, right? Mm-hmm. So you know kind of how this, because that's how it starts for me. It's always a poem. And then I have music in my heart, in my mind all the time. So there's always a melody. And so you just, after you've written and done your little structure, you can use somebody else's melody to a song or come up with your own. Oh, I like that. I actually mm-hmm. like that because I feel like I struggle with the melody. I'm like, I don't know where this would go. But if I had, if I, like, I've got, I've got books of random stuff that or I write. Girl, and I'm just like. Go on YouTube. Uh, YouTube, put in instrumental or put oh. in even a song that you're already familiar with, you know, and, you know, the cadence of the song. Um, you can, you know, put the instrumental for that song because mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. have random instrumentals and they have karaoke. And then just go for it, girl. Are you? Yeah, you should. So it sounds like you're a little bit kind of done with your songwriting, but not. I, it's always going to be a part of me. It's just yeah. pursuing my music just did not make sense um, as a struggling single mom at the time. Like I moved into the tech world and that's where I'm, I'm seeing that I'm going to be able to take care of my children the way they deserve to be taken care of. It's just me, you know, helping doing this. So. I have to do that. Struck like as a, you know, trying to get this out here and wait. That's not, it's not possible. So right so now, not. but once I'm able, you know, I believe that eventually I'll be able to fund myself, fund things. Cause I'm not playing around. I've done, I've spent a lot of time in this industry. A lot of people have wasted my time. I've, I've started um, projects that never went anywhere. Um, and I don't have time for that. So unless mm-hmm. it's really speaking to me, 
I don't have time, you know, I'm not interested. Having to prove yourself, I'm sure, over and over. And you're like, I've been doing this too long to have to like. Yeah, my stuff is out there. And mm -hmm. I feel like I have put the, I have put so many blood, sweat and tears, work, passion, energy and emotion into my writing and my, my songs. And they're in the world because they have been on SoundCloud. They've been in films. Um, so they're out there and it's going to come back at some point. It, it will. It has to. It will. It will. You're too talented not for it not to. Do you, you, said your, you said your daughter wants to act? or She's been talking about it a lot lately. How do you feel about that? <clears throat> I don't mind. I mean, I love that, that that's what she wants to do. I'm not going to like try to get her I tried this already when she was really small she had headshots and she had an agent and she was not interested and now just my knowing what I know about the industry it's not something that I'd like to invite her into if it, it's something and she's aware of a lot of things that I'm aware of that I've shared with her now if she wants to go that route <sighs> I mean, theater is great. Stick in the theater world. You can still, you know, yeah. express your acting chops. Television? Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to tell her what she can't do, I don't think. Like, as, I mean, as a 13-year-old. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Anyway. Yeah, it's... Hollywood's totally different. It's, I mean, you know, it's just not... It's um, a good question, because I don't know if what... I'm not sure yet. I wouldn't know either because you're like, on the one hand, there's something that is so beautiful about performers and people that are born with an inherent ability to express themselves in that way, right? It's, it's, it's not something that comes with everybody, so you want them to express themselves, but like, there's so much darkness and there's so much rejection and there's so much... Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Predation? Is that a word? I don't know. There's so many is. predators and there's so many people that abuse and take yeah. advantage and, and it's not worth it. No, at the end of the day. And I've I've actually have been watching a lot of podcasts of a lot of different actors and people that spend a lot like a large part of their lives in this business that have said I want nothing to do with this business anymore. And that that's really telling to me that a lot of people are coming forward and saying, no, this isn't, this wasn't good for my mental health. Yeah, it's, but you know, for some reason, so many people, they revere it, put it on a pedestal and it, you know, the industry and they have to get a taste. And I guess once they get their taste, then they'll see. Yep. The, the. I don't know, were you following the SAG strike at all? Probably not. I was out there with one of my friends one day because she was going to go. Um, with picketing. Yeah, and you know, I owe dues and I'm, I was like, I owe dues? I haven't even gotten any money. What do you mean? Leave me alone. Why are you sending me all this stuff? So you notice they, so they passed, right? They had that mm -hmm. proposed deal, which I was, I was here f yelling and cussing and screaming and throwing things because I was like, you lied to everybody for nine months saying you were going to protect actors from this deal and you gave up everything you said you were going to stand for. And then they went to have the members vote and they said, oh, wow, we have an overwhelming 65% approval rating of this new contract. Well, only 30% of the entire sag after membership was allowed to vote because people with outstanding dues were not allowed to vote. And I was like, I, that is so Hollywood gets though. easier and easier to hate every day because like even the union who are supposed to be protecting That's the so actor. Amazing. And then the next day they were talking about all these new deals that they made with AI partnerships and these tech companies. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is mm -hmm. gross. Like this is. They, it's because it's all, again, it's, it's just, it, what is it? It's not even real. It's not real anymore. It's I will say though, um, at one point, you know, I feel like I, I was the odd man out in the sense that like, I'd be like, everyone's just going to agree. Everyone's just going to go with it. But an overwhelming majority of actors, I was, I've always, I troll the comment section of while this was happening and mm -hmm. a huge majority of actors were all in opposition. Like they were all going, you robbed us mm -hmm. from a deal. You like threw away our rights completely. And that made me at least have hope 
Because I'm like, at least they get it. These aren't even lawyers, and they were able to read this contract and see, like, you couldn't pull the wool over their eyes. So then let's really quickly, what did we not cover in terms of red flags with, with, with partners? Okay, so people like that, they don't have any empathy. So mm -mm. you can, and you can tell when someone really doesn't care about you. We had an opportunity. I had an opportunity. I brought him along um, because I think there was a song that he and I had done because we started doing music together. Mm -hmm. um, and I had this opportunity to meet with the publisher at Sony. So I'm driving. We're on our way and we're on Crescent Heights going towards, it was in Westwood, I think. And all of a sudden a car comes and hits me and totals my car. And I've never been in an accident before. This is my car. And he, we get out and he's just fussing at me and yelling at me and telling me we got to figure out how we're going to get there. I don't know why that wasn't a red flag for me. Like, why wasn't that like he doesn't care for you? You just were because I was upset that he didn't care for me, but it didn't click that you don't deal with somebody like this. You don't try to make them care for you. You, yeah. that's, you know, and that's I think they they're very wise in who they choose. Yeah, that 100 percent. Nice. And they pick empaths, Definitely. which is which is wild because they pick the people who feel the most and then it's destroy they, them the they worst. What they don't have and what they want. Mm -hmm. they, they pretend like they have things. And you said another one that I, we didn't say explicitly, but not saying sorry, like no, Ever. no remorse, mm -hmm. no, accountability, no accountability. No, no I'm sorry, and and you're the blame for what they did yep. somehow. The gaslighting, it's nuts. Gaslighting, yeah. bringing up old shit that has nothing to do to, do to the conversation. Right now and I'm here and you're too sensitive. Like, not, you know, not um, considering your feelings. Again, no empathy. Have you, always, have, you, have you been told you're too sensitive a lot in your life? Mm, by specific people who all carry the same traits. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you see that after you realize. People that are in it won't see it. No. That's why we're to. here to help. Yeah. Yep. Do you do you meditate? Every single day. Fuck. I love I knew I loved you. I knew I loved you for a reason. What do you um where like did you have a journey with meditation? Did you start somewhere? Or did it just kind of like fall into your lap and you're like, I need this? It started, um I was a very uh, radical Christian all of my youth up until marriage. I imagined that my husband and I would be in church and praying together. It didn't turn out that way. And then, but I still had questions. Anyway, in like 2014, I started exploring and learning different things and then completely changed and didn't identify, don't identify as Christian anymore. All that happened. And I began meditation in that time. So like learning about meditation and I, I meditate every single day. Um, probably the weekends I don't, I do it like I work out every single day. So after my workout, I go to the sauna and I'm in there by myself. And that's, I take the time to meditate. There. You probably, you're no wonder you're like, you seem very, yeah, it's, if I don't, I'm a lunatic. I'm just <laughs> like, everything up here is a mess. And the second I do, it's just like, yeah, it's. I look at it like this because it's not always easy. I have my alarm mm -hmm. set to 5:45. I'm not. I'm a night owl. I'm not mm -hmm. an early bird. But I have, you know, I'm. I want to work on my fitness and everything. And for me, that time in the sauna is my time, just me and God. Like that's my time every day that I get to have with me and God in one of my favorite places, which is a warm, dark place because <laughs> I turn the lights off. So it's like the best, you know. Mm -hmm. like, and it does so much for me mentally and. And physically everything. So, but it's my time with God. I love it. What What else would you recommend for somebody going through, if they're if they're feeling like they're stuck in a relationship, and they can't get out of it, or they're kind of stuck in that time? Because I re I recognize that as many times as I can say all these red flags, some people are still in the position to feel like they can't leave just yet. Mm -hmm. I understand that people that may be in. Um, harmful or unsafe situations may need to take time to do that. But in the meantime, so there's meditation. I feel like 
trying to think of like one other thing that I would recommend somebody. I mean, you say you work out every day, but someone you trust is a great one. Yeah. And I would, did you tell anybody that of what you were going through with your ex? Mm, I don't think I did. Like I was talking to my best friend recently and she said, because I don't remember, you know, Mm -hmm. she said that I would say bits and pieces, but you know, people can't really understand that type of abuse. They don't even understand it. People always say things like, why don't you just, or if I I would just, and it's like, that's not how it works. Mm -mm. I don't know if it's because at this point, mentally we are we're, we've been caught captured or it's how they do it it's it's but um i told her i guess pieces but nobody i had nobody that knew everything i but towards the end like towards the last couple years my cousin who's also one of my best closest friends um she and i were going through something similar at the same time so I think around 2013, 2014 is when I knew exactly that we were on the same path as far as what we were going through with. They both, they were very similar in their ways. And um, she actually gave me a pamphlet that helped me understand what I was going through. Oh, really? Yeah. She had, her mother-in-law was a therapist and her mother-in-law gave it to her to give to me. And that's when I start reading down the checklist. I'm like, oh! <gasps> This explains everything. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, it has a name. Oh my God, it has it's a name. It's not me. Oh mm-hmm. my, it was. Oh my God, you know. No, you're not. You're not crazy. Wow. I feel like it might be a shame thing because I wondered why I did that too. But then it's like you don't want to be the person who's that friend who's like always dumping, you know, their traumas and then getting back with the ex, right. and then and then your friends that. don't like the other person because yeah. you just kind of talked yeah. and That's somebody true. else went on a podcast and was like, don't. And to a certain extent, I agree, but one person you should be able to trust. Because when I, no one knew, like, what was coming when I left. And I lost some friends from it because they just, they didn't understand. And he seems so charming and people get along with him and people just don't. I'm like, then you date him. Have fun. Let me know how that works out for you. I think I felt some shame for being treated the way that I was. And so my mom's like, why didn't you tell me? And I'm like... Because it's shameful to admit that I'm letting somebody treat me this way. It's like they, they, they are steadily losing respect for you because you are steadily allowing them to treat you like shit. Yeah. And you're steadily allowing them to treat you like shit. So they'll, they'll, they'll love you so that you'll yeah. see. So they'll, they'll see how much you're putting into this. It's just, it's sick. But the cycle has ended for me, so... Now I can help others. And yes, I get a little emotional because it was me and that's sad. Girl, I cry all the time. My first, I think, three episodes of this for me just like crying and just like, it's cathartic. It's you shedding your, your it's you apologizing to your previous giving self. yourself. But, you know, it doesn't have to be you. And it doesn't, like, it doesn't have to continue. Once you learn, you're done. And that's what it is for me. And you can help others. Have you tried dating? Yeah. Um, and I just, you know. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah. Same. I, yeah, I want, to, like I literally recently just um, deleted the app. Because I got on Hinge again for the like eighth time. Because every time I get on dating apps, I'll stand for like two weeks and I'm Maybe. over it. I'm like, I can't do this. Yuck. And I did it this time. I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And it's just, I just, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's hard, especially for somebody like you that's probably built themselves back up from nothing to be like, How, why the hell am I going to let a man oh, come no in way. and destroy all of this again? There's no way. Mm-mm. And also, I just, you know, taking the time to figure everything out so that I make the right decisions, that's taking time. And I've attempted the dating and then... You know, my standards are so high. My standards are very high for a man. Why not? You're a man. Mm -hmm. But there are, but we can change and we can grow. We can learn from, you know, our past. And that's what I've done. So I know that there's someone else out there. But I just wanted to, I just, I want to be ready. And I am ready now. Mm -hmm. Um, But I just, I don't take any shit. I, I I have a certain standard. There's things that I want and I'm not doing it. I'm not gonna even look at you if that's not you, if you're not, you know? Like, yeah. But you know, 
there's good ones out there. Just the proximity might be a thing. I live in Los, uh, you know, I live in LA County. Like, I've been thinking about um, moving out of state. You never know. Might be, he might be out there. Some of my girlfriends have said the exact same thing. They're like, I think it's an LA thing because. Like everybody is telling me this is not what they're getting everywhere else. And it is easy yeah. to get jaded. Yeah, LA is the like mecca of beautiful people. How, I mean, it's easy to not wanna, you know, date or, or, or seriously date or, or get tied down. And we are in the generation of, you know, but where, quick where fixes. But where are the people who think for themselves? So like when people say things like that, I'm like, but what about people who, but do you think LA is filled with a bunch of people who think for themselves or you think no, but the world isn't I agree I agree I think that he is out there because I'm out here. Oh, he's definitely yeah. 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 I'm here I'm I'm not on the same path as a lot of women either. So There's rarities out there, you know we, you want to go on a like camping trip to like a ranch in Montana We can find us some cowboys No cowboys I'm, I prefer to glamp no. Okay. Yeah, I'm not a camper. I'm not a camper. <laughs> I don't. I'm. 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 I'm hype maintenance. Anybody's like, do you want to camp? I'm like, why does this sound fun for you? I mean, I'll stay out there, you know, until late. But when it's time to go to sleep, I'm going inside. I want a bed. I want a shower. I, I don't want, want bugs. Real, I want to really pee and yeah, and all the things. Yeah. I'll I'll hang out here all night though by the campfire. I love yeah. the campfire. Yeah. <laughs> this was an amazing conversation, Jeremy. And you are actually the first female that I've had so far. Oh, really? Yeah, guys are easier. I think, I was thinking about it. I was like, I, I, I've i wanted more women in my space. Like this is a, it's a very feminine space. <laughs> I'm glad that you've come on and, and expressed yourself. I think a lot more, a lot more women are gonna follow and oh, follow so. sweet. And Thank I'm, you for having me. I'm so glad you came and I'm so glad we reconnected and we will still obviously, we're gonna do this again, I think. Yeah. I think you're gonna, I think a lot of people are gonna resonate with what you said. I hope so.